Hi. This is probably my most needed supply is some coffee. Because I don't know what I'm doing. But we're going to do it together. This is probably the messiest you've ever seen my desk. But what we're going to make is some labels. So I have already made a few. And we're, I'm going to just show you how I got started. So first thing I did was I got this paper. And I'm going to... I'll show you in a minute what kind of paper, but let's get started. I'm going to do this one in kind of neutrals, which is not my favorite, but I am a person that likes to use a lot of color. And so I thought, well, I probably should make at least one page of neutrals. And I'm just using this fan that I have. I'll show you that in a sec thought I should start with some neutrals because where I'm going to be using these labels will probably have an awful lot of color. So I may just want a neutral. So here's the watercolors. Remember this fan? I used it in another of my videos. And this one is from Superior. I like superior paints. They are student grade. And I, to me, the biggest reason why they're student grade is because they don't have pigment information. They don't have light fast information. But I'm not making something. Well, that's black. Well, that's okay. I'll just leave it thin and let it be gray. That's fine. Maybe I'll even put a little more on. Gray would probably be nice neutral in this as well. So yeah, I like uh, I like superior paints. Uh, I think this might be in a, a purpley shade. We'll see. Oh, it's it's indigo. Well, that's fine. But again, it's kind of dark, so I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit just with water. I've already made three more of these, and. I've got them drying because I think there's probably one of the most boring videos I could create would be with a lot of dry time. So I do try to avoid a lot of dry time. I've got some alcohol markers, not Copics, nothing expensive, just some Bic and some Sharpie. The Sharpies were on sale Buy one, get one free, but you couldn't get black. You could only get colored ones. And I go, oh, that's fine. I grab some colored ones. Okay, I think we've got some neutrals going here. And as it dries, it will lighten up. So I'm going to add some splatters. And I've been adding those with the metallic. So I have my little metallic paints. And I'm just going to do some splatters. See how dry the splatters are just kind of sitting there and then on the wet they're kind of spreading out. Both are good. But I thought, you know, a little shimmer. I always like a little shimmer. And I'm going to grab one of the shimmery colors. I uh, This one is kind of a blue shimmer, but it, it's more shimmer than blue. It's just that if you catch the light right, it'll broadcast out as a bluish hint, tint. And this is going to be, sometimes it, it may just move the paint around a little bit. You know what I mean? So, let's get a little more of that. I don't know if you can see what it's doing, but it is making some, some cool dots. I'm going to Dig into the green one now. Again, it's mostly looks like white, but in the right light, it may show a little bit towards green. Okay. So I'm working on a paper towel because I knew we were going to be wet. So there. Now, 
What I could do with this one is on one of these, is it the last one or maybe the top one? It's got a white. Now, white watercolor, it's usually in a palette so that you can mix it with other colors and get kind of a pastel -y color. But on this, I'm just letting it do its thing. I think it'll help give kind of that doppelly sort of a look. Okay, good. All right, so this is how I started these little labels that I want to make. So I'm going to just kind of clean up a little bit. We're done with the watercolors. The fan, I'm just going to set aside. I'm going to set this aside, but I'm going to keep talking. So don't you go anywhere. And I'm, I think I'm just going to take paper towel and all. You can see my messy desk, but I've been working on these. So it's a bit of a messy project. Here are the ones that I already made. I'm just going to put these brushes in the brush holder and give this just a bit of a wipe because I would rather these not get wet again. All right, if you see some smears and stuff, well, you know, that's reality. Okay, so here are the ones that I already made. So I made a red one. And can you see the shimmery stuff? I made a green one. And again, I added shimmer and I made a blue one. So what kind of paper is this? Well, here's the trick. Huh. This is an old Mead, a lot of school supplies made by Mead, sketch pad. They're uh, nine by 12 and I cut them in half and they're 50 pounds. So that's pretty light. But I, and I bought this probably in a store that doesn't even exist anymore. I'm thinking like Woolworths or something. It is old and it used to be snow white. It has now become yellowed. So, you know, the thing about it though, it's kind of got the texture of tracing paper or almost like tissue paper, but much stronger and kind of crispy. And, and it and it did absorb the watercolor quite well. So I don't know what you might have like that, but to tell you the truth, even printer paper would be just fine. But this is what I use and just never threw away paper pads. All right. This fan doesn't always like to be closed when it's really wet, but I think it's dry enough that I can close it and set it aside. So what's the next step on these? Well, that's a good question. I've got a piece of printer paper that I'm just going to use to kind of be my backing. And I want to make those little labels. And there are artists out there who make them and they have actual stamp sets that give you the shape. Well, I don't have that. But I did get this. Now, I bought this used. And as you can see, this one was already used, but whoever had these didn't use these three. But look, it's like an alphabet from a typewriter. This is sort of like numbers on an old fashioned ledger. This is like, almost reminds me of, of uh, something you would use in a bullet journal. And this is uh, Tim Holtz, Stampers Anonymous, and it's called School Desk. And it's number 057. I don't know if they still make it, but I bought it for this one for when I'm making journal cards and things to make create a writing space. But I thought for today, these numbers and letters might look cool to create these labels. So let's see what we can do. Now, these other artists, they have multiple color inks. I don't. I've got the colors that you've seen me use. Um, they've got, as I say, those, uh, let's get this crinkly thing away. They've got those, a little piece of cardboard. They've got those, uh, stamps that you can make the label shapes. I don't have that. So I'm just taking off these three and let's see what we can do with those. 
Maybe we'll use this one, maybe we won't. I don't know. So I'm going to take these and I've got my Distress. These aren't the Distress colors, but they're the Ranger Archival inks. So they don't move if they get wet. And I really like that. So I've got Vintage Photo, which is kind of a brown, black soot, which is almost black, Hickory Smoke, which is kind of a gray, and then Ground Espresso, which is um, a little bit darker brown than the Vintage Photo. So I'm going to just grab these. I'm not going to use a stamping block. At least I'm going to start out without a stamping block and just see how it goes. And I'm going to stamp this up with the idea of making these labels. I'll start out with this one just because it's on top. And I'm going to just go into the vintage photo. I'm not even going to get the whole stamp. I'm just going to go right here. Let's see, did I get some ink? Many times, the first time you use a stamp, you don't get the best first impression. I'm not worried about that. But I'm just going to stick it up here. And I am going to kind of work like from one corner to another. Oh, upside down. Well, that's all right. We can just do everything upside down. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I'm going to do it again. And, you know, a little crooked. I don't care. I'm going to switch down to the um, Hickory Smoke. Now, this will be a combination of both inks. And again, I don't care. That's very light, but it's still good. I'm going to turn it around, go back into, oh, this, yeah, Hickory Smoke. Try it here. And maybe I'm not letting it sit long enough. And I don't think this paper is particularly absorbent, but let's just see. Yeah, that turned out pretty good. Uh, I just have a little bit of space there. I'm going to save it. All right, I'm going to grab another stamp. This is the letters. I'm going to go back into the vintage photo. Probably it'll be upside down again. I don't know. And put some of these on. Oh, I like that. I'm doing that again. Yep. I think that looks great. And yeah, it's upside down. I don't care. And here we go again. Good. Maybe I'll turn it around and I'll go into the hickory smoke, the kind of gray color. And put it here. Yep. One more. Put it right here. And now I'm kind of at the same place I was before. So I'm just going to leave that strip for right now. How about these numbers? It looks like they would really go nice here, doesn't it? All right. So I'm going to go into the black soot. And I'm going to try to get the whole thing pretty well inked up. And let's see what we get. It may have overlapped a little bit. We'll just have to see. Hey, that looks good. I'm going to try that again. What did I use? Black soot. Not much of a memory, huh? <laughs> okay. Put this on again. Okay. That came out good. And maybe do one more just right there. I'm sticking with the black soot. Okay. Now I've got this little space at the bottom. And what I thought I would do is put some things on this way and maybe consider making a t some labels that are a little bit more elongated. 
Will I be happy with that? Will I dislike it? I don't know, but I'm going to try. I've never made labels like this before, but I bought some and they sure are handy. But you know me, if I can buy it, can I make it? I'm going to try. What have I got to lose? Time, maybe? I don't know. That much, I don't think that I'm going to lose. All right, one more in this corner. You know what I have that I didn't grab? A circle punch. Well, let's just see what we can do with this, and then maybe I'll grab that. We'll see, because it, it's not far. I was just looking to see if it was by me, because it wasn't that long ago that I used it. All right. Okay, close this up. I like what I see. And let's see now. What I was thinking is I'm going to use these markers and I'm going to make a little bit thicker of outlines and then make them so that I can cut in between. What size? I don't know. Small. That's for sure. I'm going to try to make a couple of lines. I'm going to turn this ruler around. I'm going to try to make a couple of lines. And, and if they could be a little bit straighter, that would be great. And this ruler is about an inch wide, I would say. So let's just see what happens. I'll start out with a black one. And do one. Do it again. And then maybe move it over just a little bit. So I'm kind of half looking at it. And do it again. How did that come out? Well, that's all right. That's good. Okay. Maybe do the same. Do it here. Where? Okay. I'll go here maybe. And I'm trying to line it up, you know, with the top here. And do it twice and then move it over but I can still see it okay now what I think I'm gonna do since this is black is I'm gonna just keep going across with black so let's try to if you can see my head I'm sorry Kind of line this up with the edge of the paper, maybe. That'll be awfully big. Maybe do half. Okay. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And do two. Move it over so I can still see a little of the black. I can't see much. Okay. And I can always touch it up. Okay, now the edges, I realize I'm just going to have to, well, maybe I can do it with the ruler. Let's see. Can I do it with the ruler? Oh, it came out okay. I'm just backing it up a tiny bit. I'm going to go all the way across. Now I'm kind of committed to do more across here. Well, that's okay. Maybe just one. Maybe I'll do this side. Are you shouting at me what I should do? Keep shouting. I need all the help I can get. Maybe I should just think about like one color be all black. I could do that. Okay. I still see. All right, let's just do like that. All right, some more. 
Maybe I'll turn it this way so I can a little bit see what I'm doing. Make it like there. Maybe once I get going with this, they'll go a little faster. I'm sure you've already all hit the fast forward button. I don't blame you. But let's just see what we get. What do you say? Don't give up too early. And I want a variety of sizes. I'm anxious to cut them out because I want to see what they look like. Isn't that awful? No patience. No patience. Terrible. Maybe some real skinny ones. I can tell you this is not the juiciest black marker I've ever used. Okay, a little bit bigger. I think I'm getting crooked. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe if I start from this side now. And I should line it up on the top there, shouldn't I? Bring this up here. Try to make it straight. So what are you doing? What are your projects? I just mailed off today four parcels. Because as I told you in an earlier video, I, uh, I'm going to try to just kind of do this one in half. I went and signed up for some swaps, some bookmark swap. It was a, some, it was a, a bookmark swap. And then a uh, artist trading card swap. So I ended up sending out three packages for that. And then I sent out another package that if anything comes of it, I'll let you know. Okay, how about just this bottom here? Okay, why don't we cut this out and see what we've got? You want to do that? Sure. Let's just see. All right, grab some scissors, Julie. And I'm gonna make my first cut right up here. All righty. And then maybe right down the middle of this part. See, I'm, that's why I wanted it wider so that a little bit of the black goes on each side. And now cut some of these out. Now, do these look just like the ones that you get from China? No. <laughs> no. But I think they could still be a cool piece of ephemera or embellishments as I'm making artist trading cards, tags, greeting cards, which again, I'm not much of a card maker, but if I need a greeting card, I will make one before I will go out and buy one. Okay, one more. Okay, let's see what we've got with this. We'll just set this aside for a moment. And turn some of these over. Well, I think these look cool. I really do. You know, I'm not just saying it. I see that one goes that way. And this one could go any which way. 
here, here. Can you see them? I hope the paper underneath isn't too distracting. I'm just trying to get it where you could see them. This one's really cool. It's got something and recorded something day of. I like that. And this one could go this way. This one came out good with all those numbers. Isn't that sweet? Okay. So then I had one more thought. <clears throat> Don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. You know how these have sometimes like a little bit of kind of a of a round or like a like a dipped in edge well i thought what if i use just my paper punch and kind of punch that in there and i can still touch it up with black if i want see all right let's see if you can see that and then if I just take my black marker look at that ta-da I think that looks amazing I'm, I brought this little paper plate, has some white gesso that's dry, doesn't matter, that I could put some finished ones on. All right, let's try to round up a couple more. And are those perfect rounding? No. Do I care? No. I think it gets the idea across. And honestly, if you want them to be that perfect way that they... Uh, when you buy them, but well then buy them, you know, and I'm not, I'm not faulting you, but I like to try this one. I kind of cut off all the black. I like to try to make my own. And I know that once I get a roll on this, it'll go faster. There's another one. Okay. Let's do a couple more and then maybe we'll switch colors. All right. Okay. I'm going to cut the corners off of this one. And I'm just trying to nip the corners. And then take my black marker and just give it a quick little going over. And there's another one. A couple more. Oh, I'm excited. I think these are going to look fantastic. Am I tooting my own horn? Always. <laughs> Don't ask twice. The answer is yes. It's nipping off those little corners. And rounding them up with my marker. Okay, one more. Good, throw it aside. Okay, I'm going to work on these green ones with the black edges in a little while. But what I want to do, and we've, we've still got this one, I'm going to go ahead and take this. Now, I realize I did make a black line here. And this is pretty much black all the way. So I'm going to, well, maybe I'll start with a whole new sheet. Let's, let's do that rather than try to fix that one. Okay. Where did I put the other ones? Over here. Maybe I'll turn this over so you can see a little bit better. I've got some little bit bitty pieces here and there, but okay. Maybe if I pick a different color now, how about blue? Well, stamp it up first, right? Okay. Do I have a different stamp that I can use? Not really. Sorry, it's going to be a little bit of the same, but I'm going to start out with the, the one that looks like uh, type typewriter letters. And I'm going into the black soot.
So yes, I went to the post office and you know, to send these packages, all of them cost less than $2. So, and now I said I would take international or USA, but they did give me all um, USA. So it is not an expensive proposition and I'm going to be receiving some of other people's artwork. But I just think it's a nifty way to see what's going on in other parts of the country and the world. Okay, I've got those. How about these numbers? I'm going to go into the hickory smoke. And I'm realizing once you cut them and they're all turned around, it doesn't matter on this master board just which way you have it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just going ahead and right side up, right side down. It really doesn't matter. And for your sake, it may go just a little bit faster. Okay, one more. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll work with this and then see what it looks like using the blue ink. What do you say? Okay, with the ruler. I'm going to start right here with the blue. I think I'm going to bring it in a little bit. I realize I'm going to be going over some of these, but I think the rest of them would have been just an awful, awfully far away. All right, here we go. And then bring it in just a little bit. Good. I'm going to go around. I've got something sticky on here. I'm going to go around here. If I have some that are plain, that really doesn't bother me. Sometimes that can be good too. It's going around this edge. The blue is definitely different. You, you know, I think it, it does show up blue. Okay. And I think, I was just trying to think. I think I'm going to go ahead and go kind of down this corridor here that I created. Not on purpose, just the way it, just the way it came out. Good. I'm going to catch these plainer ones. I think the blank ones could be nice. Okay. Bring it out a little. little bigger yet. A little smaller. If you're thinking, well, those lines aren't very straight. Well, neither is my cutting. So, and neither is my stamping. So it'll all just come out in the wash, I think. Make this a little bit bigger again. I'm 
So I went to the post office and my little city doesn't really have a post office. It's got kind of a contracted spot in a Hallmark store. And while I was there, they had more things in their little clearance area and they, they call it their uh, indoor sidewalk sale that's always there. I think it's smart in that they keep moving stuff. I found this wire sculpture. It's just two dimensional, like they use wire to draw. And it's just the outline of a girl. So she has a head, she's got arms, and then she just has a dress, but there's no detail. And then they took that, some of those little fairy lights and wrapped it around. Well, anyway, it's just as cute as can be. Original price was over $20. And she was standing there all by herself. The battery holder was empty. So she had obviously already ran out the batteries she came with. And I put batteries in. She works. And I got her for $4. And she's standing in the, a darker corner on top of a, it's a, like a console case. No, it's not that. It's kind of like a, I don't know, like an armoire. It's got drawers on the bottom and then a big space at the top where I tuck my television. And so, yeah, $4. And I got a really nice piece of home decor that I like. I think I'm just going to go big here. Or bigger. And then we can cut these out and see what we got. All right. Looks good to me. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. While you are in the comments, I would very much appreciate it if you would subscribe, if you like my content, if you like my content, and leave me a comment. I read my comments. I answer my comments. Means a lot to me. Some of you have been so faithful and it means so much. So I'm just cutting these right along the line. I am a new channel, newer, about six months old. And my goal is for a thousand subscribers. And I've got about 334. So you can tell I'm a long way from where I need to be so that I can get some of the YouTube advantages. So... Again, if you like my content, please consider subscribing and helping this new little channel grow. So what am I going to do the rest of the afternoon? Well, you know I've got more of these papers and I'm going to put on a video and I'm just going to fussy cut and put those little corners in and finish these up so that I have a nice little container of these labels. And then in the future video, I'll show you me using them, but we can just cut these up right now. Have you decided what you're gonna make for dinner tonight? Isn't that always the question of the day? I don't care if you live alone, I live alone, but it's still something that I kind of think about went to the store yesterday. To the, after I went to the post office, I went to the grocery store. The grocery store that I go to is called Meyer, or I go to Aldi. I kind of alternate between the two, just depending on what it is I need. But uh, I wanted some fresh meat, something that I could, or oh, doesn't that sound awful to say that fresh meat? Ooh. Well, anyway, uh, versus frozen, because I wanted to be able to cook up a supper and not have to be de-thawing. And I really don't have much in the freezer. I always have a little, either a little package of ground beef or a little package of ground turkey or something so that if I'm snowed in and we're coming up to that time of the year here where I live in Western Michigan, it's we get a lot of snow. Then I always have a little something, but I like to keep it rotated as well. All right, this tiny little skinny one, I'm just gonna throw in the done pile. And I think this one too, I can still cut the corners off if I want to, but I just think they're so small. I'm, I'm just not even sure I could do it.
but let's give this one a quick cut. Now this one, you don't even hardly see that there's not blue on that edge. I'm just going to throw that one in the done bin. I think this blue marker was a little bit juicier than the black one. And so I am I got just a little bit thicker of lines. Yep, throw that one in. And then we'll look at them all together. What do you say? Now this one, I think is, yeah, it's definitely going to need some work. I don't even think I got this one deep enough. So we'll grab the blue. Handier to do it now. And just touch those corners. Does this seem like something you can do? Look at that. I think I, I'm, I've never made something like this. I never tried. Didn't even know that I had that old Meaden pad of paper, but it worked out great for this. As I said, it's kind of when you feel it, the crispness of it and all, kind of remind you of a tracing paper, but it's definitely more opaque than that. And uh, it, it, it didn't even really buckle up or curl or anything. So I don't know if they still make it, but I hope. Okay, so I'm sure you don't want to see me do all these. We'll do a couple more, and then I'll just show you what they look like. I almost feel like, and you let me know what you think, but it feels like the larger, and none of these are, are too large, this is one of the largest ones, They it feels like the irregularities, the not quite even cutting or whatever, show up more on the bigger than the little. One more? Sure. Let's do one more. I like the the little gold and plain colored shimmers. I just think it I think it adds a dimension of one that you're not going to be able to buy. I promise. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have. So, there's a blue one. And a green one. I guess these aren't really blue, but they're red with a blue trim. Look at that one. Didn't that come out great? So can you kind of see? Can you get the idea? Now, I have here on my desk, these are some cutoffs. They didn't turn out to be, you know, like the... um two and a half by three and a half, but they're still good. So I can use them as journal cards, but look, if I would put some of these on, wouldn't that be sweet? What do you think? I think they're cool. I think I had some that were finished, maybe not, that was more up and down. Let's see if I can find one. Like, well, this is a plain one. I just know that some turned out this one. Okay, let's just see. Now, this is a black one. Black edges. I'm going to go ahead and cut the edges of this one. Oh, I'm just tickled with these. I really am. I hope you like them. And like I said, once I get on a roll, I'll definitely be able to do these quicker. So look, now this is an up and down label. And, you know, picture if you have like a little bird or something on here. 
or maybe a little a little saying or a little phrase. Won't that be won't that be cool? Okay. Well, I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you're going to make yourself some labels. I know I'm going to sit here and finish up a few more and maybe watch one of my favorite videos like uh, Gail Acostinelli or uh, Carrie the Crafter, which is Carrie Griffith's treasure book, Sandy Hester. But in the meantime, I'm Julie Torrens. I hope that you will consider hitting the like and subscribe. I'll look for you in another video. Bye now.